Hi, I'm Jan Leonard from Berlin. I work on Couch TV, and you should listen to the Changelog. Welcome to the Changelog, episode 0.2.8. I'm Adam Stokowiak. And I'm Wen Netherland. This is the Changelog. We cover what's fresh and new in the world of open source. If you found us on iTunes, we're also on the web at thechangelog.com, and we're also on GitHub. Yep, if you go to github.com forward slash explore, you'll find some training repos, some feature repos from our blog, as well as our audio podcasts. If you're on Twitter, follow Change Log Show, not the Change Log, and I'm Adam Stack. And I'm Penguin, P-E-N-G-W-Y-N-N, episode 28, can you believe it? Wow, man. On location, too. On location at Texas JavaScript, uh, another interview that we did. While we were down in Austin, talked to John Resig from jQuery. Yeah, mobile, uh, well, Mozilla, yeah. Mozilla Labs. Talked about the state of mobile web development. What did he say it would be fun in about three years? Well, he said in three years it would be finally fun to develop for the web on the mobile mobile devices. What's three years in tech years? It's like you know, a <laughs> decade, right? Well, yeah, it's 30 years, right? At least. <laughs> So uh, he's got a project called Test Swarm from Mozilla Labs that allows you to do continuous integration testing for your JavaScripts across a wide range of browsers and simulators. Um, talked a bit about what it's, what's entailed to support all these, uh, these browsers that are beyond iPhone and Android, especially around BlackBerry and Simeon and Nokia. And he's also got the devices to battle, the, the platforms and the software, the, the browsers to battle. It's a, that's a mess. Sounds like a recipe for insanity personally, but he yeah. seems pretty excited about it. Well, if, if there's one man who could do it, maybe it's John and his team. Agreed. Should we get to it? Let's do it. We're joined today by John Rezig, creator of jQuery, worker at Mozilla Labs. Mm-hmm. Uh, to talk to us today about Test Swarm, some other projects you got. For the four or five people out there that may not know who you are, John, why don't you introduce yourself? Sure. Um, so uh, thanks for having me. But uh, I've, uh, I'm the creator of the jQuery JavaScript library um, and a number of other JavaScript-y projects. Um, I'm also the author of the book uh, Pro JavaScript Techniques and uh, the author of the upcoming uh, Secrets of the JavaScript Ninja. Cool. So we're at Texas JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript's really had kind of a renaissance in the last couple of years, um, thanks mainly to client-side frameworks like your your own and then Node.js on the, the server side. What's the state of JavaScript as you see it? Um, I, th- I think it's you know very favorable. Um, I just I do not like I, I frequently sit down and I think you know uh, you know where you know the web is going and how languages are evolving, and I just can't envision a world in which. JavaScript is not still relevant, you know, five, ten years, fifteen years down the line. It, it, it's, um, you know, all, it's part of every browser. It's the language everyone's using, and um, yeah. So I think, yeah, in, in a lot of ways, I think now, you know, if, if you're still on the edge or trying to decide if you want to get into JavaScript, it, it's a phenomenal language to get into. There's oodles of jobs. Like everyone hires for JavaScript, uh, since everyone does web apps. So. It's it's just I don't know I, th- I think it's the tops. So, but of course you know, I'm seeing this as guy who does JavaScript all the time. But so to suppress my inner fanboy, we'll uh, we'll postpone a couple of the J- jQuery questions here for a minute. Mm-hmm. Give you a chance to talk about uh, Test Swarm and this project from uh, from Mozilla Labs. What is it? What's it trying to do? Sure. So this is um, a project that I developed uh, last year, 2009, and. It was trying to solve a, a definite problem I was encountering, which was is that when you're testing, um, trying to do automated testing in browsers, um, spe- specifically for JavaScript code, you have to open up a large number of browsers, you have to run the code, you have to collect the results, display the results, et cetera, et cetera. It, it gets very time consuming. And so sort of the premise behind getting test form up and running was that people could contribute their machines and their browsers and hook them into the swarm, as it's called. And then projects like us, like jQuery, could just submit tests in. They would run in the client machines and we would collect results back. So it would, it would remove the burden of running those machines from us. And we could just take all the advantage of, of running and having nice t- in, in easy tests uh, runs. 
So what that sort of led up to, though, and what I've been uh, working on lately is that when you start doing testing on mobile devices and testing on phones, um, you it's really hard to automate that. And um, whereas typically on the desktop, there is some way you can automate it. There's, there's toolkits like Selenium, for example, and those can automate uh, uh, browser execution. But on phones, it's just the Wild West. There's, there's nothing there that, to automate that. So this is where TestForm is really helping us uh, because we're able to automate the execution of tests on mobile devices, and we're able to get results back, and we're able to develop very similarly to how we would on the desktop. Um, so it, it just it helps to just smooth things over and make it just uh, run that you know our development process work that much better. So dealing with such a, a wide array of simulators and all these different platforms, all unicorn and rainbows? <laughs> Not really, no. Uh, I mean, it's it's a lot better than what it used to be, um, and in a lot of ways, I think that it's. Um, you know, we're, we're sort of on the cusp of m mobile web development becoming really, really good. Uh, I, I, I think probably in a couple couple years here, it's just, it's going to be phenomenal. Um, because right now, what we have are we have a good number of like WebKit based browsers, which is fantastic. But we also have a lot of really just weird and old browsers, like the BlackBerry browsers or the older Windows Mobile browsers. And you know, that's just a lot of legacy that's hanging around and, and making it frustrating for us. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's it's definitely a challenging process, especially so uh, since there there has been no good information published on how to do mobile web development. Like it, it, when you're doing desktop web development, you know you just have to you know download Firefox, download Safari, or what you know download Opera, and you just open it up and you test. But you you know that because it's like common knowledge at this point. Uh, whereas with mobile development, no one knows what the popular browsers are or how to download them or how to test them. And so this is something I've been trying to figure out. And um, I'm, like, uh, this is what I talked about uh, today, but it's something I'm, I'm, I'm going to be publishing here within the next couple of weeks uh, on the jQuery mobile website. Very cool. You, in your talk, you'd mentioned that uh, in three years from now, it's going to get real fun to develop web applications. Are we going towards web browser? Are we going towards native? What, what is the best way to go towards, uh, towards the mobile web? So th the way I think about it is that you could develop mobile applications. When I say mobile applications, you mean, I mean like uh, something you buy off an app store and you install. Uh, you, can do, you can do this using HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And there are a bunch of people that are really interested in that. You know, there's a, a phone gap that makes that possible. That's all well and good. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, though, that's, that's really, really easy. You know, you're using a latest web kit. It's a dream. <laughs> and, but the reality is, is that that's a very small subset of the total number of devices that you could be targeting. The best way to get your application or your, your website, for that matter, in front of the most number of people is to make it a website, you know, and, and just treat it like you would anything else. Um, so that way, you, uh, your users can just open up a URL, interact with your web application, um, you know, what, what have you, but uh, just using you know, traditional web technologies. And in a lot of ways here, you can, you can just, you know, it's, it's the, the what, uh, write once, use everywhere. <laughs> and so uh, it, it, just, it simply, miss, it, it, even from a logistical standpoint, it makes more sense. You just have to write one, app, what app, one web application, it works, and you get more users. Um, whereas if you're targeting s strictly uh, application installs, you know, uh, you're, you're severely limited. Um, so at least, and at least from a... Um, a technological perspective, I find that it's just it's much it's a much more challenging problem uh, to try and target those m multiple platforms. Whereas um, simply targeting like iPhone, for example, it's it's rather trivial. It's a subset of the larger issue. Right. So when we look at the mobile web, how many browsers do we really have to support? There's Symbian. There's mo there's Windows. There's what? How many are there? It's, there's a, there's a lot. Um, it's it. it at least in counting all the different operating system versions and devices, what it boils down is it boils down to about uh, a dozen devices, physical devices you have to own. And then on those, um, there's a varying number of browsers you have to support. Um, it depends because, like, uh, like for example, Opera 
runs on most mobile phones, uh, you know, Opera Mobile and Opera Mini. Uh, and then uh, Fennec, uh, the Firefox for mobile, uh, runs on Android and uh, 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 Mamo. And so it's the total number of browsers is a little bit larger than the 12. Um, so, but in and in total, it's definitely more browsers than we than what we currently support on um, a jQuery desktop. You know, it is because you know right now we support, I think it's eleven browsers, and so this is going to more than double our browser coverage. Talk about Fennec for a moment and and Firefox on mobile. Is this a code name? Is this the the marketing name for this particular platform? And how are where are we at in the lifespan of of Firefox on mobile? I. Th I think it was a code name. I think it's the actual name now. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, because, I, I mean, they have, like, the logo and everything. It's little Fennec Fox, and it looks really cute. And, um, and so, I mean, the big push, or so traditionally it's been running on Mamo, which is um, a Linux-based operating system that was on uh, Nokia tablet devices. Uh, doesn't have a lot of market share. Um, they started work on a Windows mobile version, which was probably a good idea, but the problem is that they weren't able to get tools for Windows Mobile that allowed them to build a good enough Firefox. So they canceled that project, and uh, they're focusing almost entirely on Android now, shipping a really good Firefox browser for Android. And I've played around with it some, and it's, it's just it's fantastic. It, in, in some ways, it's even faster than the built-in WebKit-based browser, um, which I think is pretty cool. And so I think there's a lot of potential here for you know additional competition to really bring new browsers in uh, into this market, especially so on um, on Android because uh, Android is is growing you know like gangbusters here, and um, so you know both Opera and Android I think have a lot of potential to grow here. When we look at the the space of the mobile browser like you just mentioned, uh, how does that trickle down in comparison to say the the desktop browsers like the standards? Do we have the same troubles, the same different issues with? supporting standards and certain types of standards being supported on web browsers for mobile? So the problems do exist. They're, they're tending, generally speaking, they're tending towards a better state. Um, so, like, for example, BlackBerry has their own custom browser that they wrote, um, and it's not quite as good as what the other browsers have. Um, they, are re they just did a rewrite, and the next version of the BlackBerry browser is going to be WebKit-based. Um, but generally speaking, the browsers that we're supporting... Are on, on mobile are generally equivalent to the browsers you see on uh, desktop. Roughly speaking, what you end up supporting in, in mobile is like Safari 2 and newer, um, Firefox 3.5 and newer, IE 6 and 7, and uh, Opera 9.5 and newer. That's roughly what the versions correlate to. Um, so yeah, so it's 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 a pretty manageable problem. The the difficulty is it's just it's just those little quirks that get you, and the, the simulators and the, you know, all the knowledge that has to go into making sure everything runs smoothly. I, I'd say probably most of the issues you're going to encounter in doing mobile web development aren't going to be logistical JavaScript issues, or they're going to be more interaction issues. You know, developing good UIs, developing things that work with touch interfaces. Like, I've got a feeling that this probably where most of the work's going to go. You know, a lot of web development is using tools like Firebug. And since you're developing for the platform, you're also consuming as a developer, you get to kind of inspect the markup and, and interact with your application in a live environment. Uh, you mentioned in your talk that the simulators are often kind of, it's difficult to simulate the actions that you're performing. How much more important are tests in this brave new world? I mean, it, it's, it's, it's critical. Um, and so it, it's, uh, there, there, there are two things. There, there's the testing and there's the debugging. Um, and unfortunately, debugging is really not solved yet. So there's, there's tools like Dragonfly for uh, Opera, which do, does that a little bit. It gives you like a, a developer console that you can use uh, and have it hook into uh, mobile devices. So that's something. Um, but in general, there aren't really tools, you know, like Windows Mobile or BlackBerry or... Fennec, for that matter, like they don't have those debug consoles, um, so it's 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 definitely tricky. And, and and this is one case where so testing will get you part of the way there, and that it'll, it'll it'll make sure you have good coverage and stop you from getting regressions, or at least help lead you on the right track. Um, but 
it's not going to help you to actually fix the bugs, and that's still hard. <laughs> So you didn't jump into this new mobile world because you were bored and needed a, a weekend hobby. You really are trying to push forward to get jQuery uh, in a more mobile-friendly state. Talk about progress around that. So when looking at the, um, the mobile system, you know, I wanted to make sure that jQuery was going to be a, a capable mobile uh, uh, library. And one of the things that I, I thought originally was maybe a good way to distribute jQuery would have like be like have a stripped down build of just things were only like WebKit devices. That could work, but I don't think that's as interesting of a problem. What I think is more interesting is being able to ship one copy of jQuery, have it be the copy of jQuery, it's the same one you download on the website, and have it work for both all the desktop browsers and all the mobile browsers. And just, just have it just work. So that way you can publish your website using jQuery, and it's going to work on desktop and mobile. And we can make that guarantee. I think that's a far more interesting problem and something that uh, no one else is really tackling right now. So at least going forward, most of our effort it isn't going to be that interesting, or, or at least not, uh, it's not going to be like flashy and you know, uh, uh, you know, gestures and stuff. It's going to be very straightforward that we're just going to make sure we work and we can guarantee that we work and we're testing, um, which is it's a lot of work, and that's something that we really want to push forward towards. How much has uh, projects like JQ Touch influenced your work at all? I mean, yeah, the JQ Touch and IUI, I mean, they're both fantastic projects, and they, um, they're predominantly focusing on the user interface, making sure that users have a, an easy way to produce an interface to interact with. Um, the the thing is that, that both of them tend to emphasize an, uh, creating uh, replicating an iPhone like experience, and that's something. But it, it it doesn't really work outside of an iPhone. You know, it doesn't really work on Android. Doesn't work on a Palm. Doesn't work on Windows Mobile. Like you you really need to have something that's much more generic and something that pr is producing a good user experience more universally. So this is something that I'm very interested in and something I'm going to be pushing forward. Uh, on uh, after the jQuery core bits are done so that we can provide users with the tools they need to have a good uh, uh, mobile application that isn't iPhone specific. You know, continuing that thread, uh, the health of, a, of an open source project can really be judged by the ecosystem it supports as well. Two projects that we featured on the show that I'd like to get your feedback on. Uh, first is Sammy JS and the second uh, underscore JS. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I played around with both of those um, a little bit, and uh, I, I wish I had more time to play with fun JavaScript projects. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, underscore, I'm trying to, I, I played around with it because it, it provides all the different um, uh, utilities and, and such. That's right. And um, yeah, the, the, I, liked, I liked that one. It, it certainly had a, an interesting API. Uh, it, was, it was nice to use. Um, and then Sammy was the, the script loader, um, right? Uh, Sammy is the one that uh, mimics Sinatra in the browser, so it gives you routes and right, 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 state, exactly. hash-based state. Yeah. And, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, they're cool. And, and, and I, like I said, I, I wish I had more time to like, really dig into it. Same thing with like, Node.js, for example. Like, 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 that's hot stuff, and like, I just have like, no time to like, actually sit down and like, build a Node.js application, which is funny, because like, you know, like, all I do all day is JavaScript, but like, I'd have no time to like, play with other JavaScript. <laughs> So what, and this is usually the part of the show we ask, what is on your open source radar? So it doesn't have to be JavaScript related. It's things, rocks you've uncovered in this new mobile world where you're, you know, uncovering all these little known simulators that we're now being, uh, you know, forced to deal with. What projects have you excited? What, what is pushing the envelope and has you excited to, to play with? I wish there was more projects relating to mobile, <laughs> mobile web. Uh, there really aren't that many. The... One that I, I was playing around recently was a uh, touch scroll, uh, which helps to simulate uh, uh, scrolling gestures on iPhone devices. And because that, that's because one of the problems with the iPhone is that you can't have position fixed elements. And so that that's something that it helps to work around. Uh, so that, that was a pretty interesting piece of code there, and I've been playing around with that a little bit. Um, another one, the name is escaping me at the moment, but is written by uh, Yehuda Katz, uh, W.Y. Katz on uh uh, on GitHub, and he he was uh, working on doing state management, uh, so being able to manage uh, like loading in remote uh, JSON resources, 
and having them hit the cash wherever possible. So I mean, that, that's been a challenge in and of itself, but it helps to, uh, to allow you to build offline applications easier. When you say you wish there were more projects in the mobile uh, web space, <clears throat> um, for the JavaScript guys out there who either want to impress you or just get in, 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 uh, into a cool project, what kind of projects do you want to see happen in the mobile web? More projects that aren't just for the iPhone. <laughs> and, like if, if you look at this, almost all the, the jo- iPhone specific, or, or so almost all the JavaScript projects that are for mobile are just for iPhone. They're you know JQ Touch, IUI, you know, like all, all those. They're just that's all they target. And if it happens to work on Android, then they're like okay. But like they don't even go beyond that. Um, so if, if something that would impress me would be things that work on more platforms. You know things that take BlackBerry into account, take Windows Mobile into account. And then you'll have my attention, for sure. You know, I'm seeing another parallel to, you know, when the web came out, we did a lot of work to try to emulate desktop interfaces in the web. And it seems like they always fall short. And as powerful as HTML5 and, you know, these new JavaScript frameworks, we have a lot more tools at our disposal now. And, and it seems like a lot of times when we're building web interfaces in the mobile web, we, we tend to want to emulate native widgets, where it seems like we're always just a bit lacking. Should we just be changing our focus and coming up with new interfaces that, that are just web-based and we're proud of it? Yeah, I suspect so. I, I mean, I think a lot of what we've learned building, because a lot of what we've been building historically uh, on desktop web apps has been mimicking desktop applications, you know, modal dialogues and grids and, you know, uh, stuff like that. It doesn't make sense at all on, on, like, on a, a mobile device. Like, um, no one would ever use a grid <laughs> on a mobile device. It's sure. insane. Um, so, you kind of have to like sort of you have you definitely have to rethink how you interact with uh, information and how you display it. Um, I'm th- this is something I'm, I'm very excited about. I'm I'm I definitely want people to tackle this and release uh, um, you know frameworks that that try to think of you know new ways of interacting with this information and hopefully ways that aren't just copying what the iPhone is doing. One more question. Uh, seems to be a lot of heat around templating in JavaScript these days with Mustache.js and mm-hmm. you've got your own you know, templating uh, thoughts that you've put on, on your blog. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's your thoughts on templating and, and is it uh, an idea that's here to stay? Now that we have JSON, we're passing data back and forth. Is it a new way of building web applications? What's your take? I, I definitely think there's a lot of potential. I mean, uh, we just recently uh, worked on a new uh, templating uh-huh. module for jQuery core. And that's been uh, that's been good. People have really enjoyed that, and it's um, that was uh, it. Sort of took some of the existing templating work that I had done, combined in some of the techniques from Mustache JS, and kind of come up with this new set of uh, functionality that's really, I think, good and very usable. Uh, and uh, people seem to like it. So yeah. Cool. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thanks for having me. of the changelog point your browser to tail.thechangelog.com to find out what's going on right now in open source also be sure to head to github.com forward slash explore to catch up on trending and feature repos as well as the latest episodes of the changelog log.